the project goes on. I fell over and over again, and he still like go gets me, right? Like, and he accepts me, accept, accept me, no matter what I did, even though I feel so bad, and it's like, and I don't feel worthy. You come back, you regret, you recognize that you did totally wrong, that he always is gonna be with open arms, right? And accept you. My name is Gerardo Sanz, or for easier, everybody can call me Jerry. Um, I live in Barrie, Ontario, Canada. I'm a welder by trade, also mechanics, but I focus more on welding. I was born in Veracruz, Mexico. Um, I was born in 1982, 13th of July. Um, the first time I came to Canada, was in Nova Scotia to do high, the last year of high school. And since I was there, I fell in love with Canada. I went through a series of problems uh, uh, with addictions after I came back from, from Nova Scotia. I touched rock bottom. Of course, the traditional uh, uh, marijuana. So it became like a curiosity. And then of course, it became like a daily basis but then from there, it's starting to try out other kind of, uh, kind of drugs. What mostly the problem was when I started to taking these pills, they, they, they call it benzos, mixing it with beer or so. So you get like mental lagoons and you, you do horrible like stuff like, you know, kind of accidents or so like. So yeah, uh, I was damaging pretty much my surroundings, especially my family and uh, and I wasn't conscious about it until my parents pretty much kicked me out of the house. <laughs> so during I was kicked out, it seems it was a stage that uh, I wasn't doing any drugs because I was trying to figure out where am I gonna go, where am I gonna live, this and that. So one day when I talked to my mom, I like, come to the house and we're gonna talk about what, what we're gonna do. My intention was just to go and grab whatever of my stuff and then leave, right? So, yeah, I decided to get help from my parents and went to rehab. So on my rehab, they have, uh, they had this, every morning they have this thing called a spiritual walk. So you walk around the beach. So I started to have like pretty much my own chats with God on the way I knew about God. Um, always, always praying to him directly because on the Catholic uh, family I grew up, somehow they teach you, oh, you have to pray to this saint or you have to pray to this virgin in order to, you know, uh, different, different ways. But I don't know, I always had that in my feelings that I don't have to do this. I think I can, I can talk to God directly because at some point my mom told me that once. They teach you the 12 steps in those rehab uh, places and then, um, then I found that they have biblical base, that's why it works. They just exclude the God part because a lot of people have other beliefs. So in order to, to, to I guess, people accept the program, that's why they exclude God. I came after the rehab, you know, I just continue my life. I went to a, that small group and it turned out to be the, the house of a pastor that had the small group. And when I was hearing all this, it's like so different. Everything's so different, like from the Catholic school I used to go in order to do this. There's this thing they call First Communion or so, but it's more like a protocol status thing. So I started to get fascinated about the way he was explaining the Bible, explaining the parable, this and that. And I was just like, yeah, this is it. I felt it like, it's like, I remember right away when the, at the end of the small group, the pastor is like, so now that you know about Jesus, you know about all this, it's like Jesus wants to have a relationship with you. So at the end of the, the session of the small group, the pastor was telling like, well, now that you know the truth about Jesus, Jesus, uh, wants to have a relationship in order to be you guys you guys you guys you can be saved and 
And like as, as soon as he made the pop out the question, who wants to receive Jesus in my heart? I was the first one to raise my hand, like me, me. I was, it's like, I, I needed this, like, because uh, what I was doing, it was, it was okay, but it was, it's just like, yeah, it's just, I just put like a lid on the bottle or, um, that's, that's a saying they say, like, you just put a lid on the bottle, but the, the behavior or the, the relationship is not, it's not nothing, right? Like, so yeah, when I met, that's how I met Christ. Like, when the pastor told, told me about it, and I was fascinated, everything about it. Like, yeah, I want this, I needed this. Like, this is what I was looking for, because, you know, I kept feeling like, eh, what's next? I feel empty. But yeah, that's pretty much how I, how I met Christ, and it was awesome. You know, feel calm, but at the same time, there's always, there was always this fear, which then I discovered, like, by reading, it's like, when you're about to receive a blessing, attack is going to come. Always going to be attack, an, an attack from the enemy. Always going to put fear here, fear there. Um, it's going to put the storm, right? Like, right on top of you. So even on stressful times, you remind that Holy Ghost can be... In, in 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 your area with you, trust me, it will be. It's gonna give you the serenity to accept any any outcome. We ask a hedge of protection be placed around them and that you would direct their steps. God, I pray for Lilia and Jerry that you would give them wisdom, Lord, that you would give them patience, and that you would direct them as a family. Help them to raise these beautiful girls in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. God, let me fly.